Assalamualaikum and hi everyone, my name is Ain and I'm going to explain about the introduction part for our experiment. Adsorption is a suppression process in which certain particles act as adsorbate are bound to an adsorbent particle surface by either chemical or physical attraction. In this experiment, activated carbon is used to remove methylene blue from this water solution. Thus, in this case, activated carbon act as adsorbent while methylene blue act as adsorbent. There are numerous types of adsorbents such as activated alumina, silica gel, activated carbon, molecular sieve carbon, molecular sieve zeolites and polymeric. Adsorption processes are analyzed in the two fundamental contexts which are isotherm and reaction kinetics. Isotherms are empirical relations which are used to predict how much solid can be absorbed by activated carbon. The three most well-known isotherms are the Prandtl, Lamoille and Linear. Reaction kinetics or chemical kinetics is the rate of chemical processes which involve the elementary processes, reaction or steps. In chemical industry, there are extensive absorption applications such as in preserving vacuum, decolorization of sugarcane, chromatography analysis and so on. And for our objective of this experiment are to study the adsorption kinetics on the experiment by determining whether the process is pseudo first order or pseudo second order reaction and its respective kinetic concept. And the second objective for our experiment is to determine the effect of different concentrations of vitamin blue on the rate of adsorption. Hi, my name is Mok Xiao and I'll be uh, explaining about the procedures for our experiment today. But before that, I would like to introduce the equipment and materials that we've been using. First of all would be the spectrophotometer, which measures adsorbents. For the next equipment, we've been using the stirrer machine. This allows us to set our revolutions per minute for our stirrers. And for the last equipment, we'll be using the electronic weighing balance to measure the activated carbon and also the methylene blue. As for the procedure, one liter of distilled water is filled into five beakers. Next, five different samples of 0.2 gram granular activated carbon is weighed on a weighing scale. In the third step, different concentrations vary from 10 to 50 mg per liter of methylene blue solution is then weighed on a weighing scale. Next, the different concentrations of methylene blue are added into the beakers and then agitated at 150 revolutions per minute. The mixture is then left alone to agitate until equilibrium is reached. The samples from the metal blue solutions are collected and measured at a wavelength of 665 nanometers using UV visible spectrophotometer. After measuring with the UV visible spectrophotometer, 0.2 gram of granulated activated carbon is added to each concentration and the solutions are agitated again using a stirrer at 150 rpm until a solid solution equilibrium is achieved. 
Samples are then filtered and collected at a time interval of 10 minutes using sampling bottles and the samples are measured using the spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer is calibrated using distilled water to reset it for high reliable accuracy before sampling each metal blue solution. Hi, I'm Haidar and I'm about to talk about the results and discussion of the experiment. Based on the experiment that we have just conducted, we managed to plot six graphs as shown here in order to support our objective of the experiment. The first graph is about the removal efficiency versus time. Well, uh, the, the main objective of the experiment is to reach at least 70% of removal efficiency. Based on the graph here, uh, all samples reach 92% of removal efficiency at p equals to 15 minutes and remains there until the end of the experiment, which shows that our experiment was successful. The second graph is about concentration of methylene blue left in the solution versus time. Well, based on the graph shown, it can be observed that the methylene blue in all of the solution are significantly removed in the first 15 minutes of the reaction, which is shortly followed by the constant amount of methylene blue left in the solution throughout the rest of the experiment. In the third graph, C of a CO versus time is, plot, is plotted to find the breakthrough point. What is a breakthrough point? Breakthrough point is a point whereby the adsorbent reaches its saturation point and could not adsorb any more solvent unless it is reactivated or replaced by a new adsorbent. Based on the graph here, 10 mg of 10 mg per liter of methylene blue in the solution, breaking point is found at t equals to 13 minutes. Since at 13 at t equals to 13 minutes onward, the concentration of the methylene blue is increasing again, means that desorption starts to happen. While for 30 and 50 mg per liter of methylene blue in the solution, the breaking point is observed at t equals to 15 minutes. Since after 15 minutes, the concentration of the methylene blue left in the solution is fluctuating. Hello everyone, I'm Janshir. And next, we also study the reaction kinetics of the adsorption experiment with the data obtained. The first graph shows the concentration of absorbent over absorbent, which is denoted by QT. We can observe that all three experiments show a similar trend, but differ in the QT value, in which the QT value is the biggest when 50 mg per liter concentration of methylene blue solution is used. The next two graphs, we are also able to determine the pseudo order for this absorption experiment, which is the key element to study the reaction kinetics. From these graphs, pseudo second order is chosen as it is easier to determine the equilibrium concentration which is denoted by QE and the rate constant. This is because the QE value we can obtain from the gradient itself. Hello everyone, my name is Abdul Azim Abadi and I'm going to talk about the errors and modification in our experiment. When conducting our experiment, we have found a few errors. One of, this, one of it is that the vial which contains the sample for the spectrometer has stains of metal blue from the previous experiments. Therefore, we, can, we should make sure that the vials are cleaned thoroughly by flushing it with water before conducting the experiment to avoid staining which can cause the reading of the spectrometer to have uh, inaccuracies. Secondly, fluctuation occurs when we are weighing the methylene blue and granular activated carbon. Uh, for this, we have to ensure that the glass walls of the electronic balance are tightly closed during the reading of the, of the weight of the methylene blue and activated carbon in order to get more accurate readings. Thirdly, the vials containing samples of the spectrometer contains droplets of water. Therefore, we have to ensure that the vials are completely dry by wiping it with dry tissues before pipetting samples of metal blue in it. Fourthly, the pipette still contains residues from previous experiments. For this, we have to wash the pipette thoroughly in order to remove any residues from the previous samples, then dry entirely and do not use the same pipette for different solution as it can make spectrometer reading to be inaccurate. That is all. Now I'm going to talk about the conclusion. Firstly, the experiment was a success as to reach 70% of removal efficiency. 
we, we achieve 70 percent of efficiency in the first 10 minutes and 90 percent of removal efficiency in the 15 minutes. Secondly, we vary the concentration of the metal blue solution and concluded that the higher the concentration of metal blue, the higher the amount left in the sample after after the experiment. However, the removal efficiency for all the samples are the same. Finally, we concluded that the adsorption process conforms with the pseudo-second order reaction. The graph for all samples shows a linear trend and have a R-squared value that is near to 1.